Episode 2, The Core 4. Welcome to Not Really Hungry, the podcast that explores how to eat mindfully, lose weight, and change your life. Now here's your host, Tanya Blankenship. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the core four. The core four is the not really hungry weight loss method. And this method focuses on the four main habits that you need to develop for success and lasting weight loss. I started this idea of having my own method or system clear back in 2014. And I had started writing a bunch of posts on my blog called Habits of a Loser. So at that time, I was working on putting all these habits together, and I was planning to develop a system, and my original framework had 15 different habits. All those habits are awesome and helpful, of course, but as I was thinking about how to cover the topics for the podcast, I realized that that original framework was just really overwhelming, and if it felt overwhelming for me and I wrote the posts for sure it was going to feel overwhelming for everyone else. So I just realized that I was just making it way too hard. And that was probably one of the reasons I was really having trouble committing again myself. So as I was getting ready for this podcast, it really helped me realize that I just needed to simplify. So what I did is I went through all of my habits and I picked out the top habits and focus on those four instead of trying to change everything at once. So that's how the core four was born. All of the other habits are still important, but ultimately they all support the core four in some way. So we're going to start out talking about the main four, and then in future episodes, we'll weave in some of the other habits and how they can support the core four. As I mentioned, this started from my Habits of a Loser series. The reason I really wanted to focus on habits is because habits are something that You do so often, they become routine and automatic, almost involuntary sometimes. So they become easy. When something is a habit, you don't even think about it most of the time. That's what we want to get to with our health and weight loss. We want it to be easy and routine, things that you can do without even thinking about because the more you can turn some of these weight loss behaviors into habits, the easier it will be and the more likely that you're going to stick to it long term because once it's a habit and you don't have to think about it, it just goes on autopilot. That's what we want. We want healthy living on autopilot so we don't even have to worry about it. The first habit in the core four is called handle your hunger. Really what this means is we want to stop eating when we're not really hungry. Simple, right? Yeah, not so much. If it was simple, none of us would be overweight, right? We eat for so many reasons, and most of them are not physical hunger. We eat when we are stressed, sad, mad, tired, bored, lonely, anxious. The list just goes on and on. But the common theme is that most of the time we're using food to escape. There's some emotion we don't want to feel, so we eat to distract ourselves or numb ourselves. Or sometimes it's just because we want to relax and decompress. Eating gives us the excuse to stop and sit for a few minutes because so many of us feel guilty if we're sitting and doing nothing and we start thinking about all the things that we should be doing, blah, blah, blah. So we feel like in order to sit and relax, we have to find something to do and sometimes that becomes eating. Learning how to handle your hunger will definitely be a process. There will be experimenting and stumbling along the way, but this is totally normal. Okay, repeat after me. It is normal to struggle as we try to change. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you'll never figure it out. All it means is you have to keep trying until you find the thing that does work for you. This habit is the most important, but it's also the most challenging. Trust me, it is worth the effort. You have to hang in there through the ups and the downs and the learning curve. Episode three is going to be a complete episode devoted to handle your hunger because there's a lot that we need to talk about related to this. 
but just know that you can do it. And once you get control over your hunger, it's completely empowering because you are in charge, not your hunger, not your emotions. You are the only one in charge of what goes into your mouth, how much goes into your mouth, and what you think and feel about food. Probably one of the biggest issues I struggled with was nighttime eating, and I feel like I have finally gotten a handle on that. Not to say that I don't still have nights where I struggle, but it is a million times better than it used to be. The stress of eating out or doing things unexpected, it's just so much less stress than it used to be. I really do believe that everyone can get there. You will not regret the journey because once you get there, it's amazing. Habit two is called plan and reflect. Planning gives you a roadmap to follow and reflecting helps you determine how much you enjoyed your trip. They are both important and they really work together to help you succeed. So I know that planning does not come naturally to everyone and not everyone enjoys it. Hopefully I can help you see the benefits. I personally love planning and it's hard for me to imagine that someone wouldn't like planning But honestly, the biggest benefit for me is planning removes so much stress from my life. When it comes to eating and I'm planning what I will eat, it takes away all the decision drama. It takes away impulse eating. It helps me focus. It keeps me accountable. It saves me time. I mean, it's just so much easier if I have my food planned in advance instead of trying to figure out moment to moment what I'm going to eat, what the next thing is that I'm going to eat, when I'm going to eat again. Just so many things go around your head when you don't have a plan for what you're going to eat. That's definitely something that I firmly believe in. Back in my Weight Watchers days, I was all about tracking. And that's another habit that we'll talk about later because planning and tracking kind of go hand in hand. But the big difference now is that instead of me giving myself, I guess, the wiggle room to change as I go along. Now I make my plan ahead of time and I just follow that plan the next day. If something comes up that I want that wasn't on my plan, I just say no and have it the next day. Sometimes I will change my plan if we decide to go out to dinner or something like that, but I still try to make the best choice and try to make a choice that's similar to what I had on my plan. Ultimately, the the planning my food in advance, it's not about depriving myself. It's about making decisions when I'm at my best. Tired Tanya does not make good decisions ever about anything and especially not about food. If I can make the decision ahead of time to say, hey, this is what I'd like to eat tomorrow because I know that this will help me reach my weight loss goals and this is healthy and this is food that I enjoy. I make all those decisions when I have a clear head and a rational head, not in the moment of stress or smelling some food that gets me all tempted or whatever. Really having the plan just prevents me from eating crap like donuts or birthday cookies or something like that because if somebody brings a treat into the office... That's an easy excuse for me. Like, hey, I didn't plan it today, so I can't have that. And really, I don't say I can't have that. I say I'm choosing not to have that because I'm choosing to stick to my plan. I try never to use the word I can't because that tends to make you feel deprived and it feels negative and you feel like you're missing out or something. But if you say I'm choosing something, that's a lot more empowering and something that is more a positive tone than saying I can't. Anyway, my point is having that plan just keeps me from eating crap like that. It doesn't keep me from having a splurge. It doesn't keep me from having food that I like. It doesn't make me hungry. It really just keeps me in check and keeps me sticking to the goals that I made when I had my best interests in mind. So the key thing to remember about this habit, planning should be fast. Don't overthink it. Just make your plan. Make it simple. Make it realistic. Don't sit there and agonize over if it's the perfect vegetable or the perfect number of calories. Just make a plan and stick to it. That's the most important thing. When you are reflecting, don't be negative. Use your reflecting to improve yourself, not to beat yourself up. Beating yourself up is a favorite pastime for all of us, and it doesn't do any good. Being mean is never motivating, yet we do it all the time. We talk so negatively to ourselves, 
And we would never talk like that to our best friend or our sister or our mom or our daughters. When you're reflecting, you have to try to put yourself in that frame of mind that you're talking to a loved one and think about how you would talk to them and try to talk to yourself that way, because we need to love ourselves if we're going to improve our lives. The other thing I want you to know is that you do not need the perfect planner or the perfect app or the perfect notebook before you can start the process of planning and reflecting. Grab a piece of paper, grab a napkin, do whatever you have to do, but start doing it. Don't wait until you find the perfect situation because the perfect situation never happens. However, because I am naturally an organized person and I like having systems. I did create a core four planner and it does give you a book of 12 weeks of plans for you to follow to make it simple. There is a weekly plan, a daily plan and spots for daily and weekly reflections. Again, this is not a requirement. You do not have to have this in order to implement this habit. I just found it really helpful to have everything all in one place. And that way I was able to look back at previous weeks to see what worked and what didn't work. There it really is something powerful about writing it down. Before I created this planner, I was just keeping track of stuff in an app and on my computer. And it was really convenient. And of course, you know, I have my phone with me everywhere. So I was never more than two feet away from what I would use to to keep track of these things. But I noticed the first time that I started actually writing it down, how much more I stopped and thought about my decisions before I did it. The first time I was staring at that piece of paper that said, what's your activity plan for the week? And I was like, um, well, uh, see, I don't really have one because I haven't been doing any activity prior to that. I was just kind of, you know, in blissful ignorance, just pretending that that wasn't something that you needed to do. And the writing it down and the seeing it right there in black and white, just, it really does do something. And I know there's some science out there that says you remember things better when you actually write it down versus typing. But I've never been like a big writer. I always usually prefer to type, but when it comes to the planning and the reflecting, it really does seem to make a difference when I'm physically writing it down. So again, you don't have to get the planner, but find something that you can use to keep track of your stuff and to make a quick plan so you can get started right away. Habit number three is drink water. I know, I know this is like the most boring habit and the most boring rule ever, but our bodies need water, period. Like, have you ever heard of any kind of diet or health plan that didn't recommend drinking water? Probably not. The most important thing that you need to know though, is that water is necessary for fat burning. If you want to lose weight, burning fat should be a top priority, right? Think of it that way. Think of every time you drink a bottle of water that I'm helping my body burn more fat. But the other thing is it gives us energy. It helps with digestion, even helps our skin look better. I mean, there are just so many reasons that we should do it, but there are tons of people that don't. There are lots of people that probably drink zero glasses of water every day, and that's just really hard on our bodies. So the goal is about eight glasses or 64 ounces a day, but honestly, it can vary from person to person. It can vary based on your climate, where you live, how much exercise you're doing, There are tons of things that can affect it. So ultimately you can use your urine as a guide. As long as your urine is pale yellow, you're in good shape. If it is super dark, then that means you're dehydrated. And if it's clear, that means you're overhydrated and you might want to step it back a little bit. Years and years ago, before I really got into running, a friend of mine was training for the Susan G. Komen three-day walk, and I was trying to support her and, of course, work on my own health and fitness and things like that. And I went with her to a training walk, and it was at an athletic shoe store. They had this chart, basically, of the different colors that your urine could be. And I just remember thinking, how hilarious it was. And, you know, I just never had thought about it that way before. And so that totally stuck in my head. But their point was, 
hey, you guys are going walking for 60 miles. The last thing you can do is get dehydrated. So they were super focused on it. It was, of course, for, you know, an endurance event, but I just, it's stuck in my head. And I've just always used that even just in my day-to-day life to try to make sure that I'm getting enough water for my body to really work its best. Ultimately, part of losing weight and just being healthy in general is you want to get your body working and feeling its best. If water's hard for you, really try to think about why is it hard for you? Like what thoughts do you have about it or what are you telling yourself? Are you constantly telling yourself, oh, this is gross, this is boring, it's not sweet enough? Whatever it is that you're telling yourself, try to give yourself a positive thought about it instead. Even if you don't believe it, start telling yourself this is refreshing, I'm nurturing myself, I'm caring for myself. You know, whatever it is that you can get behind, just try it. I know you're going to feel silly at first and it's going to feel foreign, but the more you can put those positive thoughts in your brain and get your brain thinking it, eventually you'll start believing it and you can kick out some of those uber negative thoughts. Now, I'm not saying that if you hate water, that doing this is suddenly going to cause you to do a 180 and fall in love with water. But if you can do enough to get yourself to tolerate it and to get the water in, that's an important step because it really, really is an important habit just for our general health. The final habit in the core four is sleep more. I could have just said, you need to develop the habit of sleeping, but honestly, everybody sleeps, right? We just don't sleep enough. Most of us adults love sleeping, yet for some reason, we just don't do it enough. Our lives are so busy and we're always overscheduled and somehow sleep just gets pushed down the priority list. We are supposed to be getting at least seven hours of sleep. And honestly, most of us would probably do better if we got eight or nine hours. But there's a lot of people that barely get five or six hours and we're just running on fumes and that is not good for any part of your health, but especially when it comes to your weight loss. When we aren't getting enough sleep, our metabolism gets screwed up and our hormones get all sorts of screwed up. The hunger hormones get completely thrown out of whack when you're not getting enough sleep. It starts telling your brain that you're hungry when you're not, and then it's harder for you to tell when you're actually full. So okay, you're tired and your body's like craving sugar because it wants energy and you feel hungry, but then you don't know when you're full. And it's all these crazy hormonal issues happening all because you didn't get enough sleep. The other issue is that cortisol, the stress hormone that can get elevated when you don't get enough sleep also. And that can sometimes cause increased appetite on top of the hormones being all funky and you don't know what's going on with your hunger cues not getting enough sleep can mess with your brain too. So the part of your brain that's responsible for decision-making, it doesn't work as well when you're not getting enough sleep. So then not only are your cravings worse and you don't know when you're full, you also aren't making the best decisions because you don't have the normal resistance level that you would if you were running on a full tank of sleep. It's crazy when you start doing the research and see all the things that get affected when you don't get enough sleep. But I can tell you from personal experience, I have had those days where I didn't get enough sleep. And honestly, I crave chocolate a lot more than I normally would. And the junk, the (laughs) desserts, like for me, it's always sweets for some reason. I guess it's just the whole like sugar gives you a quick boost of energy or something, but I can absolutely tell on those days when I don't get enough sleep that my cravings are completely out of whack. I even noticed last weekend that I felt hungry almost all day. It seemed like every two hours I was hungry and not just like a little, oh, that sounds good. Like I was legit hungry multiple times throughout the day when I normally wouldn't be hungry. And I kept kind of complaining and like, what's going on? Why am I so hungry? And finally Jim looked at me and he was like, you haven't gotten enough sleep for like three or four days. Oh, ding, ding, ding. There you go. Like, no wonder it wasn't just a mental craving. Like my body was physically craving it. My stomach was growling and you really wouldn't know the difference between that and true hunger. So if I wasn't looking for the reason and knowing that that's not my normal pattern, I I wouldn't have even realized that it was related to my sleep. So it's just 
a really important habit. And of course, if you are not getting good sleep now, or you're only getting five hours, you're not going to be able to just fix it like magic, but just start working on getting a little bit more, you know, 10 minutes more every night, and then slowly bump it up until you get to that seven. And you will really be amazed when you consistently get seven hours of sleep, how much better you will feel, how much better your brain will function, how much easier things will feel, how much less stress you will have. It, it is truly amazing the difference that it can make, but you really don't see the difference until you start getting consistent sleep. So if you get one night of great sleep and then three nights of horrible sleep, you're probably not going to notice a difference. But if you get multiple nights in a row of, you know, seven to nine hours, you really, really should start feeling a difference. Well, that's it. That's the core four method. Simple, right? It's four simple things. Handle your hunger, plan and reflect, drink water, sleep more. That's totally doable. If you want to jump in right now and do something, what I suggest is doing a daily plan. That's like number one thing that really helps me. It's the easiest thing. You can just jump in, just write down what you're going to eat the rest of the day or write down what you're going to eat tomorrow and then just follow it. The drinking water to me kind of feels like a gimme because really all it takes is committing and doing it. The sleeping, I know there's lots of other things that can get in our way with commitments and family life and things like that. But when you make it a priority, you can find a way to get it done. Handle your hunger is something that you definitely have to practice at. The more you plan and the more you reflect, the more you will learn to handle your hunger because as you're reflecting, you will start noticing things about your hunger. You know, how you felt after you ate and you realize you ate too much. And Okay, well, then I need to stop sooner. Or if you realize you're hungry every two hours, then maybe you didn't eat enough or you weren't eating the right foods at that meal. So all of those things tied into your hunger will really come to light when you're doing your planning and reflecting. So that's why I say start with the planning and go from there. But again, keep it simple. These are just the four basic habits that I really think will help you find success. All of these habits are covered in a lot more detail on the blog at notreallyhungry.com. Next episode, we are going to devote entirely to the habit of handling your hunger. And we're going to really dive into all the mental crap that goes along with it, strategies and things that you can do to help you learn about your hunger and really get a handle on it so that you don't have to think about it so much and that you can make decisions about your food with confidence instead of from a place of fear. So I'm really looking forward to that episode. But again, if you want more information right now, check out the blog. And if you want to order the planner, there will be a link to that in the show notes as well. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the Not Really Hungry Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email podcast at notreallyhungry.com or leave a voicemail at 330-595-4662. If you want to hear more from Not Really Hungry, check out the blog at notreallyhungry.com, where you'll find even more ways to eat mindfully, lose weight, and change your life.